Welcome back, folks, to Super Metroid. We're still roaming around here in Norfair, looking for some more power-ups and stuff. There's a couple that I want to pick up in this part, but let's see if I can get across here. Not even close. <laughs> more of those uh, seahorse people. Yep. Thanks. Uh, interestingly, the various who protects you from like the, the temperature heat down here, but it still doesn't protect you from the lava. I think later, yes, the gravity suit later on when we pick that up, it actually will keep, you know, protect me. So that's something to look forward to. Do you have any particular memories of uh, Metroid? You mentioned the omelet room. Yeah, that's my favorite. I don't know why. Just get to the purple bubble room and my dad makes omelets. That's... <laughs> <laughs> it's, just awesome. it, it's a Christmas tradition. Mm, so that'd be the best Christmas tradition. So, did you ever actually? What's that? This is actually the first Metroid I didn't have. Oh, okay, I was gonna say, did you actually ever beat this back in the day? Nope. How far did you get? Oh, I can't. I honestly don't remember half the game. Oh, okay. To be honest with you, so. so. I think I remember you were saying something about you. You know, you beat Kraid. Yeah, I know I beat Kraid. Like, I'm playing through it on the Wii now, so... Okay. So I, I remember beating Kraid before. Okay. I don't think I got to Krokomire. I don't think I did, anyway. No? It's funny, I look back on some of these games I have now. Now, you had a speed boost through this area. Those blocks that I just destroyed are speed boost breakable. So that's why that room's so all nice and flat. And it's a quick way back to the main section here. But, uh, back in the day... The original NES, Super NES. I remember a lot of games that I used to play, and in my, you know, so-called <clears throat> grown-up years, I uh, forget exactly which games that I beat. Again, you get a speed boost through here. This, the game's going too quick. I'm trying to talk about, you know, ancient history and such, but um, like games like the uh, the Ninja Turtles game for NES. I remember buying that on the Virtual Console, thinking I want to actually beat that game finally. So I got it, I played it, I couldn't beat the game, and out of sheer frustration of that Technodrome stage, I thought, you know what, I'm going to actually look on YouTube and see what the ending looks like. Meanwhile, I pick up the Ice Beam. Samus is ready to freeze stuff. But anyway, I looked up YouTube, I saw the Turtles ending, and as I watched it, I remembered back in, you know, I've seen this somewhere before. Where, hey, where I had seen it was as a kid, because I had beaten the Turtles game. <laughs> so therefore, I didn't need to buy it at all. But it's still fun. Yeah. We had good times with it. I'm pretty sure the only Metroid games I've beaten were the ones from the Prime series. Okay. That's only the first two so far. Yeah, you're still working on Prime 3, aren't you, now that you found it again? Yeah. <laughs> good right. stuff. You know, I'm not a fan of first-person shooters, right? But so when I heard Metroid was going that method with the uh, on the GameCube for Metroid Prime, I kind of thought, I don't know if I like that idea. Like, Metroid to me is this what we're looking at right now. It's the side-scrolling exploration. I don't know how well I would accept it. I mean, moving from 2D to 3D is one thing, but this was moving from this perspective to the first person. However, I will say that as far as first-person shooter games go, Prime does it well. Yep. The entire series, I liked it. So, uh, we'll get around to some of those someday as well. Here I'm trying to figure out where do I need to go. I'm trying to find that chamber with all those rippers going back and forth. Now that I have the ice beam, I can hop up them. Obviously, I was going the wrong way. Now, I like this room that we're passing through right now, this glass tube. Technically, if you look up at the map in the corner, see we just jumped to a different section? That part there with the glass tube is an entirely different section of the uh, planet, but you're able to access it back and forth through that later on, anyway. I love the way things are so interconnected. It's like that even uh, 
that's something else that Metroid Prime got right. All the different, uh, like the Magmore Caverns connect to the Chozo Ruins, connect to the Fendrana Drifts. Yeah. You just feel like it's it's not so much set up in, in stages, like uh, Metroid Fusion. Something that kind of I didn't like about that was that everything had its own, you know, sub-chamber, like chambers one through six, the different pods. Yeah, really? They, yeah. Um, it, well, there's different ways to get through them. Like, you didn't have to take the elevator all the time. You could, there's secret passageways to, like, get to the next chamber. Yeah, there are some, so, there are some sections where they do that, but for the most part, the, uh, when the computer tells you where to go next, it shows the little blinky light, the, uh, the beacon. It says, go back to the main elevator, go to the main, you know, chamber, and then head back to, uh, or head down to Biosphere 3 or whatever. But there are... <laughs> well, whatever. And destroy Polly Shore. Yeah. Buddy. So I'm locked in this room. I can't quite escape yet. Gotta take out all the enemies. As always. And this was a completely wasted room to come into because... As you see, I'm trying to break through. It's power bomb only. Which we still don't have yet. So we're gonna keep going up. There's gotta be something useful up in the elevator. This takes us back up to the Criteria section of the planet. And to a nice yellow power bomb door, which I can't open. Come on. Alright. Heading back down. I love the backtracking exploration of this game. You know, once I find power bombs, I'm going to unlock so many new things in this. I don't actually show it off, but uh, there is that traditional power bomb. Oh, what's this? Look, I couldn't even get back if I wanted to because the door I came in is now a yellow power bomb door. Ooh, these guys are in fusion. Oh, yeah. Our Vi guy. Don't they... Isn't there a boss where it actually evolves, too? Uh, yeah, I think so. I say evolves. Ow! I'm thinking, uh, Metapod into Butterfree. <laughs> yeah. There's some power bombs, finally! Now, I was saying there's, like, the, the power bomb trick where you need to have a certain amount of items. I hate these plants, by the way. You'll see more why later. Or maybe now. Yeah, okay. This is a bad spot. This just is not good times. But anyway, what is it you need? I think 10 missiles, 10 super missiles, and 11 power bombs. And to be at a certain amount of health, uh, you got to roll into a ball and do... I think you have to do a certain uh, key sequence or something with the buttons, a certain button sequence. And you basically fill up all of your uh, energy tanks again. I forget. There's like a special name for that too. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I do. I, I just don't know what it's called. Something crystal. Yeah, yeah that was featured in the comic book. By the yeah, way. I remember that. They showed that off. So you know, as as much as you might complain about the comic and that bounty hunter guy and stuff, it had its usefulness. Well, they could have done the same thing by saying, "Hey, did you know you could do this?" They didn't need a whole comic book. <laughs> and they didn't need that guy to uh, be there at all, I suppose. No. I don't know, every time, like, I've never actually seen the comic myself, but whenever you mention this, uh, he was basically like an obnoxious kind of guy, right? Yeah. I can't yeah. help but think Simon Belmont. Not the, uh, no. traditional Simon Belmont, I'm talking Captain N. Yeah, no, this guy, I hated him more than Simon Belmont. Like, I thought he was more annoying. You hated Simon Belmont? No, as much as this guy in a comic for okay. Me Super Metroid. No. All right, we'll let that slide then. Simon Belmont was supposed to be a guy you're supposed to like to hate because <laughs> he was annoying. That that's just the way he was designed. This guy was designed to be like the superhero of the century or whatever. And Even though I, Samus is the main character and he's kind of stealing her thunder. Yeah, like Samus is the main character of Metroid, and you don't want this. Nobody that comes out of nowhere. Yeah. That's kind of the funny thing I... What's Pushy, that? Uh, is Pushy the character from The Simpsons? Is a, uh, what is it? Hitchy and Scratchy show. The Poochie. Dog. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's what that's what this character was. He was introduced. <laughs> My name is Poochie D, and I rock the telly. That's exactly what he was. Oh that's... man. Okay, now I get a better feel for what you're talking about. Now, okay, we're back here at Samus's place, which is what we like to call Samus's place. And yeah. when you go in there, it's a save. It's like basically a save room, but you can also refill all of your health, your weapons, and stuff. So my question is: She came to the planet with no missiles, no super missiles, no power bombs. How exactly is she refilling her ammunition by going in there? It tends to imply she had that stuff locked away, like you know, in storage or whatever. Why didn't she bring out her entire arsenal with her when she came here on the planet? I don't know. Maybe I'm questioning too much. But then that also leads into like traditionally in. I need the grapple beam. <laughs> All right, we're heading back. But that just leads into more questions, like even with uh, the Mega Man series, you end off every game with all these powers, these abilities, and stuff. Like Samus right now has these, or by the end of let's say the original Metroid, Samus had missiles, bombs, the Morph Ball, uh, Ice Beam, all this stuff. But you start this game off with nothing whatsoever. Kind of leads to the question: Why do they? Do, how do they lose their powers? Right. I like to think that Samus's suit has this thing that it can adapt to temporary powers. Like, like say you wanted your soldiers to be armed with certain things, but you don't want them to have them all the time because you, they'll uprise and the you know, the absolute power corrupt absolutely kind of thing. Oh, well, and also you don't want your soldiers rebelling against you afterwards. Like you give them all this super stuff, then they start taking you out. But just you want your soldiers to have what they need at the time they need it and it's sort of a temporary thing and it lasts for so long and then it goes away but anyway so essentially you're saying that Chozo equipped her power suit with an egg timer yeah okay now I get it now I think you're probably supposed to come in here later with the gravity suit to protect you from that acid but I'm like you know what I'm here already it's dangerous but I'm going for it with the ice beam, you can freeze these enemies and give yourself a bit of a safe platform to stand on. Well, <laughs> at some times. Doesn't seem to be working out too much. You should have left him like... I me. was thinking the exact same thing. I should not have killed that... Uh, I think these guys are called the Rippers, actually. I should look up, actually, and see what these guys are all named. But again, so many different names for so many different creatures. I'll never keep it all straight. But as we get through this section here, we're off in search of more power-ups. We'll see you next time.